story. This is John's Pentecost. It's not like this gospel was written so that you could put things together. We don't know whether this gospel writer even knew about Luke and his gospel and book of Acts, where he talks about the people all gathering together and everybody was speaking different languages and they all understood each other. And then they were sent out every, to every tribe and every nation in the world, in the known world. That's Luke's Pentecost. This is John's Pentecost. So there's lots of hidden meaning in all of these verses, and I'm just going to highlight a few of them. The first one you've heard me talking about before is the use of the word, the Jews. When you hear something like this, that they were behind locked doors because they are afraid of the Jews, it sounds very anti-Semitic. And it was not written that way. It was translated poorly. It, what it should say, they were afraid of the Jewish authorities in Jerusalem. But it's also meant to be written for two times. When this gospel was written, the original disciples had died off. There were very few people still alive that had seen Jesus. So this story has very potent meaning for that early community. They are still being persecuted, sometimes more severely than the disciples were. And they are having doors locked, keeping them out of the synagogue. So behind locked doors means that they have been locked out of the synagogue. They are believing Jews. So you can't have anti-Semitism when it's a Jewish issue that they're fighting. It is so hurtful to them to be thrown out that they are now turning the locked doors into something that is joyful because Jesus comes through those locked doors to them. Jesus, the Jew, comes through the locked doors and invites them to be joyful in the risen Lord. Now, we also see some other things happening in this story which is that Jesus is not first recognizable. They hear him say, peace be with you, and they see him, but they don't recognize him. Not until he says, look at my hands and look at my side, do they recognize him. Then they're rejoicing and joyful. And he says again, peace be with you. And he sends them out among the nations. This is where they're sent out. This is where a disciple becomes an apostle, and that's what apostle means, is sent out. So this is the Pentecost moment. But they need something to go with them to give them their power, something he promised them throughout the entire gospel according to John. They need the Holy Spirit. And how does he give them that Holy Spirit? He blows, he blows wind. Like God blowing creation into being through the Holy Spirit, Jesus blows on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. So it's this entire event that Thomas missed. He didn't just miss seeing this apparition of Jesus and then recognizing it was the real Jesus and not an apparition. He didn't just miss seeing the wounds on his hands and side. He didn't miss that. He missed being blown on and having the Holy Spirit given to me, to him, well, to all of us. He was devastated. And we are supposed to resonate with that devastation because this early community, remember, is now losing all of the first witnesses. And the Christian church changed radically at that moment. And that's when the Gospels began to be written and when they began to be passed among the different churches so that people could be strengthened by the word of God. But it happened in a very tense time. They're being persecuted. They're frightened. So when you say that they're frightened, it wasn't just the earliest disciples that were scared of being crucified like Jesus. It was all of this first century. The earliest Christians were being persecuted and locked out of the synagogue. So Thomas is an emblem of all of us. He didn't get to see it. He missed it. Did any of us get to see it? No. Do we feel the Holy Spirit blowing on us? No. So we're supposed to travel with Thomas as he says the impossible and says, please, 
god this is what i'm ordering up i want to see the rooms and i want to see the side i want everything that my friends got to see and i want it right now and not often do we get our prayers answered in such specificity but thomas does and why does he for us he is doing this for us so that we can through thomas gain the belief that thomas gained that when he is surprised by joy and sees jesus just like his friends did in the flesh in front of him and is invited to come just like they were and touch his hand and touch his side he is blown over backwards with belief he comes to belief in that moment that is huge and sends him into a ministry that is unique to him and that is what we are asked to do through reading what happened to him to know that that is our destiny also and he says the pen ultimate words in the entire gospel according to john he says who jesus really is my lord and my god the god who can blow creation into being who gives them the power to witness to the truth in their midst and gives them the power to go out and stop being afraid which is the point of this reading they do not need to be afraid we need to be afraid if we don't come to some sense of what we believe about the resurrection because we have been christians for who knows how long some of us for a long time some of us are very new christians we are asked to have this fresh encounter with what the resurrection means throughout these 50 days of easter not just repeat that jesus christ is risen today hallelujah we're kind of tepid when we really get down to it. We have to find a new way to see the resurrection. Every Easter, it comes around every year to wake us up and know what it was like to have to grab a hold of this. This is not something that happens every day. But enough of the people saw it and experienced that Jesus Christ did come to them from death in a new form, a form that could operate through doors and yet had skin, a form that could eat, a form that could give them blessings and invite them to have supper with him on the beach. Enough people witnessed and told their story that we have the New Testament over there. I have one over here too. We have the New Testament, which is just brimful of witness of the risen Lord. And we have each other, this community, and no locked doors. So when we are sent out, we open up those doors in the back of the church and we are sent out into the world as fellow apostles in the name of Thomas, knowing that our Lord and God is none other than Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>